Thank you for coming. So in the next three and a half hours, Sarah and I are going to outline to you everything in the future of Camp Arcadia. No. Um, um, so first question is just a little bit of background of how we got to this evening. All right. I should um, make up my screen. How did we get here? Clicker on the stand. There we go. How did we get here? Oh, you're supposed to turn it. No, it's on. How about you? Uh oh. Cool. All right. We all sit out here. Good. So, how did we? How did we get here? Part of it is so. Most of you know this history extremely well, but in the past five, six, seven years, we've had a lot of things happen at camp. You know, we saved camp from the rising lake, lake levels, um, which was amazing. God worked through all of you to make that happen. And then we had that little global pandemic that we had to get through. That was a lot of fun. And then we, um, after that, the board of directors and the staff um, got together and we started looking at, okay, what, what's next for Camp Arcadia? Um, and we talked, we did lots of research and did some brainstorming. We got feedback from all of you. And we started looking at what are the next things that are important to camp's ministry. Um, and what's different about this timing right now is that it's with the beach and the rising lake, rising lake levels, it was real obvious what the problem was, right? It was right in our face. It was flashing on us, right? And with the pandemic, while it was difficult, the problem was right in front of us. We're looking now at a more like proactive approach. What are things that we can start to address now before there are a big problem in the future? Okay, and so that's kind of stuff that we'll be that we'll be talking about. Oh, it's right up here. There we go. Um, this past year, we've worked more intently, taking the ideas and thoughts and concepts we had from last year and refining those and working with an architect to develop some plans, which we will show you today. All right. And the next one. So the vision, mission, and values, that's what drives all of this. There were handouts on that. We've rolled, this was rolled out about a year ago. Um, not a gigantic change in camps, uh, vision, mission, or values. Um, but, uh, you know, the parts that I have to highlight are the, um, the aspects here that I talk about, which inspires or transform them, their lives, families, and communities. And then down here, inspired to share the love of Christ in our, fam in our lives, families, and communities. Um, those weren't in our mission or vision before. We added that because we wanted to know, like, what's the point of the Camp Arcadia experience? Yes, it's a chance to be renewed in spirit, mind, and body. You know, what's the impact it's supposed to have when you, when you go home, right? We want what happens here to have an impact on you personally, but also with your families, your churches, as you go back home. So that helps um, guide us as you look at our programming, our speakers, all that. What is the point of Camp Arcadia? The values here, these are not new values. We didn't just become a Lutheran camp, okay? These are not new. But the first time they've been written down like this. And we use all this, especially these values, as we train our staff. And we go through this and say, you know, what are the most important things for camp and how we go about organizing it. So um, you have that sheet if you want to look at it. Um, I talked about proactive solutions, things that we can look at now so they're not a problem for the future. Um, and also, you know, we're not looking to change the Camp Arcadia experience, like what you love about it. We're not looking to change. We're just looking to make sure that we're, that we're, that we're, that, there, that the hurdles and obstacles to that experience, we make sure that we are addressing. All right. So the first area that I, I, I want to talk about is, is, is staffing. Um, staffing is a big part of the Camp Arcadia experience. I would say it, it's truly the spirit of Arcadia. And we want to make sure that, um, that uh, what we're doing with our staffing, like my goal is that our staffing experience is top 5% in Christian camping world, right? And so, um, and we know that um, it is more difficult than ever to attract and retain quality staff, right? That's not because they're not out there. It's the competition for their, for their time has dramatically increased. All right? So their opportunities are more than they used to be. When I was applying to work on, on staff, I, had, I was going to work at a pool store where I put chlorine in people's cars or come to Camp Arcadia, or I was going to go to Alaska and work on the salmon boats, which I would have hated that. So, you know, but... <laughs> I never thought about the staff now, they come in with the mentality is I need to maximize my summers for my, for my major in school or, the, or, or 
that kind of stuff. And so they're coming in here and often they're thinking, well, I can take a break from maximizing my summers to work at camp. Or can I risk taking a break from that? I want to change that mentality to I need to be at camp because this is maximizing my summers towards my not only my spiritual life, but also my professional life and personal life as well. And so moving towards more of a leadership development model. And we've been working on that for a, a few years. It's coming into uh, focus now as we, as, we, as we look at developing them as leaders, spiritual growth, and nurturing the whole person. So this year we made some adjustments to our staffing model. Um, we've done that since COVID, you know, where we started to rotate kids in multiple departments. And this year, um, they're rotating by week as opposed to half day, right? And that's given us more stability in our departments. Um, it's also given us the opportunity to debrief with them more. Um, one of the biggest ways to grow their, their uh, leadership abilities is for them to reflect and process how is it going, all right? We also have more opportunities for them to be um, – to be uh, to check in with them and 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 that's something where all the staff every week are given the opportunity to to check in with either me or Sarah or their department heads once a week because the number one question that the, that the staff have is um, how am I doing they want to know if they're doing a good job or not doing a good job right which seems pretty obvious but when you're working at camp and working 60 hours a week it can be hard to build that in so we've built that in, they give them the feedback. So we check in, not just on how they're doing on their, on their job, but also how they're doing uh, personally, spiritually, physically. Um, one of the things also that, that, that we've added is a KPI. Does anyone know what a KPI is? What is it? Key performance indicator. Yeah, of course, Brett knows. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so it's a business term, right? It's, it's a way to identify what does it mean for you to be successful and how do we know if you're successful in your jobs, right? And so we have that for every department. We have it for all of our staff and then our department has as well. That's what we go through on our check-ins and our e evaluations to make sure they know what they're, if they're doing a good job or not. Um, also have, have, uh, have done things, the SWI is the Staff Wellness Initiative, so we, the Arcadia Foundation is sponsoring um, free online counseling for all of our staff. They do it confidentially and they can sign up for that and do that. Um, we know that they are doing it because we are paying for it, um, but we don't know who it is or why they're, why they're uh, doing it, but we wanted to give them that opportunity. We also have staff who come in with counseling plans and we make sure that we accommodate that while they're while they're here. If you have a kid in college, you will know like every college that my kids looked at, there was some opportunity for free counseling that they were offered. So um, looking also at uh, internships, we continue to offer lots of internships. Um, and uh, you, you, as you probably saw from our staff intro, we have like 18 engineers on staff. And so one major, I'm a difficulty finding how we can do an internship here, but we're, we're, uh, we're working on it. And all this, you know, there's a lot of uh, chatter about this generation. There's some good uh, recent literature, the anxious, anxious generation by uh, Jonathan Haidt and everything. And so, um, but I have found that our staff now is probably more committed to camp mission than they've ever been. They are more driven by ministry and mission than they've ever been. But they all have increased expectations for us in this experience. They're not going to do the same amount of work without a certain amount of feedback and growth opportunities that I did back in the day, you know? And that doesn't make them soft or that kind of stuff. It just makes them, like, the, 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 the dynamics have changed. And camps all across the, the uh, nation are facing a decline in applicants for their jobs. And so the camps that are fighting against that are camps that are, are changing their staffing model and increasing the opportunities for them. And that's what our hope to do. Yes, Nancy. Yes, so it's a national trend. More kids are delaying college, taking breaks during college, or taking a break after they graduate college to figure out what they want to do. And we are reaping the benefits. So, um, so yeah, so that is, you know, yeah, it, that's, that's what it is, you know. I mean, 
And you know, some of our kids are were Concordia and Ann Arbor kids who don't know what they're going to do next, so they're choosing to uh, to uh, to uh, stay here. But yeah, no, that that is a that is a trend, and we are, like I said, benefiting from that. Uh, also, we have more staff that don't change department. I think program has seven staff who don't change department. Kitchen has five, and that's added some stability to those departments. We also added, uh, you saw at the, at the staff talent show, uh, Michelle Gilbertson, she's our housekeeping supervisor, um, and she's volunteering doing that. She's a new cottager, but that adds stability. She's also a great mentor for those young people, and Sandy Conrad, from the cottage county also is our head baker in the kitchen that's also adding some stability i like to say like r raising the floor as far as our operations go but also adding mentoring to young people along the way so lots of work on our staff stuff we'll continue this is a, a kind of a i would say a moving target but it's a target that we have to continue to look at this every year tweak it but also make improvements towards it like i said we want to this is the first year that we've done a more of the debriefing model on there. And so we're gonna, it's shown a lot of positive re results for us, not only with how they experienced their, 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 their time on staff, but also on our performance. You know, our staff are, are getting better, uh, faster at it. So, cool. We're gonna move on to, any, any questions about staffing before we move on to some other things? Yes. Yeah, we, this, this year is an exceptional staff. We always have a, a, good, a good staff. This year has been exceptional. And I, I don't think we can take all the credit for that. You know, I think some of them were fully baked when they came in with some great, from great, uh, from some, some great skills, but also they really bought into the model here and, and, and they, they've been phenomenal. So we were, fully, we were staff, fully staffed for the summer by the end of February, which was where we should be. And most camps, I mean, I get emails all the time like, uh, we are. We need nine staff, and it was, the camp starts in a week. You know, so at that point, you don't have a lot of choice, right? And so our goal is to have a surplus of applicants, so we have a good choice for our summer staff. And this year, that was our result. So, any other questions on staffing stuff? Yeah. We are always talking about staying full, full, full um, season. I think. I mean. If you talk to me for more than five minutes, I'm going to mention fall staff to you. So I think they're aware, aware of it. But we've had a good crew, I would say the last three, four years, where we've had staff stay later. So when there's a good crew, they say, well, I could, I'm friends with them. So we have seven right now that are, that, that are, that are staying. And they've, they've formed a good community. And then the people that come in are able to add into that, you know. So, but like if there was just one college kid staying, it wouldn't be as attractive, but when there's seven, it's like, oh yeah, I can really do that. But seriously, if you know of anybody, we still, that, 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 they're, they're a great fit for us. When they come and they don't know what they want to do with their life, love it, <laughs> love it. Because not only does it, do, but are they good, are, are they good workers, but, but, but they also, we can speak into that and they have time to reflect on, especially in the fall. You know, I mean, it's either like being at home where your parents are like glaring at you every five minutes for like figure it out or come to camp and then we don't glare at you. We just give you jobs to do all day long. And then you have time to hang out and talk about other people who don't know what they want to do. It's great. So, all right, moving on here. Recreational improvements, all right? So we want to look at some of the, you know, our goals here is we want to keep things simple. That's one of our values there. We want new engaging opportunities for guests. Some ideas we have here are disc golf. You guys know what disc golf is, right? Frisbee golf, right? And so um, that's been probably the number one thing our staff do on their day off is they'll go play disc golf somewhere. I think partly why is because it's free, relatively free. You don't have to pay to play it. And that the barrier to entry is pretty, pretty low. You cannot be a great athlete and do disc golf and have fun with it, right? And so um, it's very, very popular. And so, and, and so we're looking at a portable disc golf uh, set up here, like nine, nine holes. We can move around and everything and see Maybe we go permanent in the future, but right now a portable one makes more sense as we figure out the best way to do it on our property. It's all something that you can do without having to have a, st there's no staffing to it, you know? And you can do it with your kids, with other adults, other kids, so, yes. The let's get poison ivy one? Yes, I think that's great, yes, 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 yes. 
That's, that's why it's portable, right? Like, oops, sorry, no. Yes, I think that that's, that, that'd be a, a great thing to do through the cottage colony at night, just throwing frisbee at cottages' houses. <laughs> now, these are my nightmares I have with disc golf. It's like they're always going to end up in someone's backyard that doesn't want in their backyard. But, you know, that'd be a great thing. And, like, teens would love to, like, do that, right? So Anything late at night. Anything late at night, exactly. Yes, yes. Um, pump track, and kids, it's, it's already out there. It was built. We still need to kind of work on it, but I just got a picture of your kids using it out there, right? Braxton, Braxton loved it. So the whole point was for kids to have an opportunity. It's like a dirt biking, like, round of hills, and it's not, it's not jumps, per se. It's like banked corners and rolling hills, but it's kind of a skills course for, like, kids like that, and, and my son had the I- idea for it. I've seen other, other camps do it. I think it's a fun activity to add to our list of things to do. A sand volleyball court. I'll show you a picture of that. So, so this is, if you look up here, I don't know why I keep taking it. What am I doing? If you look up here, you have um, Lake. Here we go. This is Lake Michigan. This is the assembly we're right now. This is the tennis courts, all right? Looking at a sand volleyball court over here, so shuffle boards right here, the walkway to the cottage right here. So sand volleyball here, and a pavilion here. So, so here is the sand volleyball court over here. All right. <laughs> Glow in the dark volleyballs. And then a pavilion over here. So this is north of the tennis courts here. And. I don't say it's to every group, but this is the week I pictured using this every night. So, <laughs> this, yes, you're gonna have to pay. You're gonna have to pay for it, but it, it's it's not yours. So, um, so this is a pavilion here that's right up here. This would be a cement slab. You would have um, uh, chairs and tables in there. Some low lighting here, you know. Um, some Adirondack chairs out here. Probably a fire pit out here. We would get rid of the gazebo that is there or move it someplace else. And probably the, the outlook that's over here probably would go as well. And this would be the place for that as well. Um, the stairs we had to the beach, that was uh, like a, a fever dream a few years ago. We had a bunch of sand out there. We thought, oh, we should have access to the beach here. It has never come back. So, um, so these will be moving as well. Um, some other pictures of the pavilion here. Um, We've got a uh, little paneled ceiling in here. We obviously want it to look like the rest of camp's buildings here. Um, seated b- needs, yeah. needs a disco ball, all right. Um, there will be, um, it seats about, fi- seats about 50 people in here. The purpose for this would be a, like the morning youth groups could go out there, be a place to, if you had like a family gathering, like for somebody's someone's birthday or anniversary, sometimes it can be awkward to be in the central campground area because you feel like you're taking spot from somebody else or you're in here and it's a nice day and you want to be outside. So up, up there would be a great use for that. Evening time, nighttime as well. We wanted to make sure that we also have, so there would be like a, like a visual and noise barrier here of trees and vegetation, not blocking the view, but blocking some of that from the first cottage. And then looking here, there would be a walkway like through from the sidewalk here, up here that would be university accessible, kind of a switchback up there. It's kind of a grade there. You could also access it from here as well, but that would not be universally accessible. They want everyone to be able to, to use the pavilion up there. Some have called it the, was that? I mean, that'd be quite a walk, but yeah, you, you, you could take your stuff up there. For sure. It's another place to like sit down, for sure. Yep. Wedding? We don't do weddings at camp, but you, you could do your own wedding up there. That'd be that'd be fine. So um, any questions about these recreational stuff? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's just um, that current lookout is right there. So it's further south of that. So we, we put this as far south as we could so you, you could look here, but also so that we didn't like, this is the walkway that goes up to the area now. So it's clearly not, just to be careful, like there's some concern about it being in front of the first cottage there. It's not even close to that area. So um, my, my, my instinct is they would probably go away, although we haven't made that decision that this would be as good as better a place to hang out 
than that would be. So, yes. So this is the cement sidewalk goes from the shuffleboard courts and tennis courts to the cottage colony. Off of that, we would have a we would probably have a crushed limestone trail similar to what's at the University Accessible Trail at the uh, Baldy up there, and you would have it through what is now woods there. You would have a kind of a you'd have it to the appropriate grade leading up to the pavilion here. You could still two accesses. This would not be universally accessible. If you'd been there, it's a bunch of sand, right? This is the easy way to do the universally accessible because you have the distance to make the grade. So, and you see these, these, these lines that are close to each other? That's indicating uh, an incline. Yeah. So, does that make sense, Stu? Cool. On the other side, right there, like we looked at this, looked at like four or five different locations for this, and I had originally thought that this would go here, but there's so much grade in here, you'd have to put a retaining wall there. Same with putting this further this way. You need to, so this is the only place you can put it and not put a retaining wall up, which really increases the cost of it. Like the fun sand, sand volleyball court all of a sudden costs like over $100,000, and like it's not worth that. So um, this is the best location to have it. And there are questions on the recreational stuff. Cool. All right. Let's look at the, um, we're going to look at the lodging stuff here. And um, right here. So obviously how we lodge people is a big deal at camp, right? Um, most of you are staying in camp lodging. Um, we want to make sure camp is accessible for everyone. We want a proactive, would be a little bit proactive on the housing trends. I mean, no one would, I mean, I would say the last time camp was proactive on housing trends was when they built the inn in 1927. I don't think prior to that. I mean, at that point, it was state of the art, indoor plumbing, a bunch of rooms. I mean, it was pretty, pretty, pretty top of the line there. It has ceased to be that. Um, <laughs> and, um, and so, um, but we want to make sure that we're maintaining the camp experience no matter what we do. And so, um, one of the things as we as we look at at uh, at the trends in in in, in uh, housing, what do you think is the biggest uh, trend in vacation housing or lodging? So you get motels, roadside motels. You get large inns where you walk down the hall to the bathroom. I think it's that. No, okay. Vacation rental homes, right? Airbnbs, Verbos, right? I've stayed in a few generally or in my case every time nicer than my house like wow this is this is this is nice right so um and um that's our competition most people who say they're not coming back to camp or they're not or they're going to take a, a year off i ask them what are you guys gonna do for vacation we're renting a house at so and so and that's where we're going to be and that's not bad and i'm not saying it's like our competition like people shouldn't shouldn't do that but that's what we're competing against we're in, we're in, it used to be Disneyland, Disney World, that's not the competition anymore. It really is uh, that kind of stuff. So um, as we look at our, at our housing, we need to start looking at that. But first, we're going to look at, we've, or we've, we've got also, I mentioned here, the accessibility, more private bathrooms. As you imagine, we have more requests for that than we have private bathrooms available. And then multifamily housing. Um, let's look at the in addition here. So we're looking at, if you were part of the last spirit of our kitty campaign, we had two phases to it. The second phase had in addition to the inn, all the way across a turnaround, a lobby, an elevator over there, and like a third floor observation room. So our feedback from that was that people didn't want us to go over the turnaround. This is the tree, the turnaround. Here's Lake Michigan, this is the inn. So that going over the turnaround was not an attractive option for many of our guests. And for, they liked the view. They also didn't want things too close to the chapel and the beach. It kind of really tightened things up here. So, so um, we have now looked at a smaller addition onto the south of the end. And then we have put in the elevator over here on the north end of the end. 
we looked at various options for where to put the elevator, right? So the elevator is to get more people to go to the second floor. Right now, we have more requests for first floor rooms for health reasons than we have space available. It's not everyone who's in a wheelchair or a walker. It's just people who, like, don't want to take stairs all day long, right? And so um, we looked at putting it, like, right in the middle of the, of the uh, lobby, like off the coffee lobby. But you would lose two rooms, at least two rooms on the second floor. Um, we looked at putting it over here. The problem with here is when you come into camp, it's great. But after that, the rest of the time you're at camp, you're over here. And so if you were, had to, if the other way here, you had to come down every night or every day, all the way down here, raining, whatever, to get into here. So we put it on the south, on the north end here, because that's where most of our activity at camp goes. Plus, it was pretty easy to add it to that without uh, getting rid of any rooms. So let's look at, this is the end south edition. So right here is where the, because of the lighter, this is the addition here. Um, and um, if you're like, wow, that looks a lot like the end right now. Good, that's the point. Um, and, um, but the, the porch goes around here. There's another screened in porch over here, all right? And then this is, this actually increases our front porch by 78%. Whoa. We're talking grand hotel levels here. <laughs> We're start charging people to walk on our front porch now. I'm joking. That's why I've never walked on, the, on, the, on that front porch at the Grand Hotel, because I'm too cheap to pay to walk on someone's front porch. But anyways, so up, up here, you have, so you have a, a turn here. This is the entrance to the, the uh, extended dining room. Here's, here's the ramp up there. Um, but this sunroom is a little bit larger, 160 square foot. Our current one is 136 square foot. But, uh, and uh, so a, kind of a nice addition there. Looking at the at the floor plans, and we have up here some binders that have this. You can look at it if you have a hard time seeing this. Um, so this is Lake Michigan again. This is where you walk into the, the inn right here. Um, so this is the new part over here. And so this is the porch. Here's the additional dining room space. You've got an interior storage here. Think of the high chairs, things like that. Exterior storage for the chapel and the beach. Um, what this allows us is to accommodate more people in the dining room, but also allows us to like keep up our breakfast buffet tables, like maybe in the back here, all the time, right? As opposed to they take it down every day and set it back up and all that stuff. So that would be nice. Um, have a little bit more space in there, accommodate a few more people as well. And here is the elevator over here. So that's added on to the existing new stairwell there, just on the other side. So these rooms, which have two windows, would lose one. Uh, yeah, I'll show you. Boop. So this adds four rooms, all with their own private bath. These are smaller rooms in the sense of they're four-person rooms or uh, two queen beds or a queen bed and a bunk bed or that kind of stuff. Um, that's really what our need is since we've added those larger rooms to the end. We really don't need larger rooms. These are more for couples or smaller, smaller families. And so they each have their own bathroom. Um, they'll have uh, two of the four will be universally accessible bathrooms. All right? With a, so a wheelchair could get into it. And then here's the elevator. So. And here is the easiest artist rendering that we had done. This is the elevator. Yes, that's a tree, not the corner of the building, just in case you're wondering. But... Uh, you don't lose any rooms. Yeah. You just lose the windows here. Yeah, right. Yeah, we don't want to lose rooms on there. And this is, I think, the best access for people who are coming in off of the, where, they, where, where they're mostly going to be. So, and yes. That is not true. So um, it, it, it is up to code. So it's not out of code in any sense of that. So we have a fire suppression system, everything that is up, up to code. So we'd have to continue to stay up to code. But when we added the uh, addition onto the first floor and second floor of the inn on the, on the first floor there, we added those first floor rooms with their own bathrooms. Um, that was done without having to bring up to code in a certain sense. So, yep. Yes, we are currently up to code for ADA requirements because we have um, because we have rooms on the first floor. 
Um, if we didn't have any rooms on the first floor, then we'd be out of ADA, but so, yep. All right, before we go to cottages, any questions on the end stuff? Yes. This always comes up when it's hot outside. I don't know why. So, so um, the, the uh, question is, have you considered air conditioning for the inn? And we'll get to the cottages, which we are considering air conditioning in. But for the inn, we have not, um, mostly because of what that would be to put that into the end. There's, of course, ways to do it, but like currently everything in the end would have would be would be challenged as far as if you did forced air, the ducts and all that kind of stuff. If you did the splits that go into the walls, all the doors. So there's more issues with doing it in the end, you know, and I know it's hard to imagine because you're here right now and it's really sticky and it's 80 degrees outside and everything, but this is very unusual, right? It is not. We have an attic fan system in the in the end which does help suck up some of that suck out push out some of that the hot air but i would say we never would consider it it's not part of the current plan so well, i was just thinking how we can like because of the roof being high we can do maybe because the roof is higher we can do it now right so the attic fan is not like that it doesn't what is that the attic is not like that yes i assume it is i hope it is it should be it's on <laughs> yes Like the, the splits, the, the mini splits, like you have at your, but yeah. Yes. Yeah. That would be very expensive. But I mean, if you go, if, but if you go like from the beginning of the day, I can see where you would be more worried about the heat. Sure. But I, I we'll get to the cottage here, which will kind of think maybe answer some of that. So let's go to the cottages now. And so um, our existing cottages, you know, Aspen Birch and Cedar um, and Spruce and Juniper. Um, they were um, built in the 60s. They were never intended to last this long, okay? We, we did not build them. We bought them from um, the Barron's family, and um, they were never meant to last as long as they, as they have. They're not winterized. Most of them are not, or they're not uh, accessible either. Um, we have less demand for our cottages than we do our inn, which kind of is the opposite of what the trend is. So you had to think like, what's wrong with our cottages as opposed to that, you know? And so part of it is their distance to camp, the quality and, and, and that. So we are looking at, our options were to repair them and we constantly are and we'll continue that, but um, they have limitations. We looked at selling them, especially the three in the corner. And about five years ago, the appraisal was like, it was like $90,000. It'll be more now, but um, you can build one house on that lot, not three. And so um, we're not looking at that right now. So looking at building new cottages um, and making sure that uh, they're obviously nicer, that they're university ex accessible, winterized, and looking at climate controlled air conditioning as well. And that we would be looking at taking our current cottages, except for probably Juniper, and repurposing them for adult staff. So back to our staffing model, we could have more adult volunteers or people throughout the summer um, help with caretaking, help in the kitchen or anything. So that would really open up our staffing model, I think in a real positive way. Um, so looking at the Oaks, this is the first one I'm gonna talk about is the Oak Street Cottage. So this is Juniper Cottage right here. This is the one that has been winterized. We do put in people the year round staff and things like, like, like that. And, and next to it would be called the Oak Street Cottage. Um, it's a larger cottage, so four baths, or four beds, two baths, possibly three. Um, looking at it being winterized, uh, air conditioning. We have a large kitchen, dining area, and living area. So I'm going to show you some other cottages that we want to build. But if we're going to do year-round programming, which is a possibility, it's not driving this model, I would say. What's driving this is how we use it in the summer. But if we were going to make these, we could use these for in the winter or the off-season, the shoulder seasons that this would be the cottage where they could come and have meals together. Since camp wouldn't be providing meals or you, our kitchen would not be open, there would be a larger kitchen, a big area there to eat in there. And we have the plans up here. If you want to see them, we can show you that and take you, take you, take you through that. Um, and this is 
property. Where is it? So this is shows you to Juniper. This is camp down here, caretaker's house here. Hopefully you've enjoyed the updates to the caretaker's house. So yes. So if you see Franco, he did an amazing job. I mean, he had a self-interest. It's his house, but still um, <laughs> did a great job working on that. A lot of volunteers. You see Tom Dunn from the Cottage Colony and uh, um, uh, Bob Conrad. They really helped make that happen, and uh, we're very excited for the new house as well as the landscaping. Yes. Yes, um, yes, there was some asbestos removal that had to take a place in there, um, updated to a bathroom, and it took their old garage that was there and made it into a bedroom. So, yeah, there's some work on the, on the inside as well. Yeah, I'm sure they would love it, yeah, exactly. Just, just knock on the door, you know, so. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then um, just for this cottage, so you would have, Right now, this is where the driveway is for Juniper. We could go behind the cottage here, put parking for the cottage here, take the parking off the road here, clean it up a bit, and have a fire pit out there. So this could be like two groups in here type of, type of thing. Yes. We'll get to that, but yeah, I mean, all this is being contracted out. So, yes. Right. Okay, what? Doesn't that happen? Doesn't that happen now? I, I, I'm not quite sure. So you're saying there's an opportunity for mass booking, like a block, like. It's a drawing. We're Lutheran. It's not a lottery. We're not gambling here. <laughs> Slow down. So, so I guess, We're, yes. I guess more guaranteed that you're helping with the construction. Okay. Let me return to that after we get through these other drawings. Right. No, it's a it's a great it's a great question. It goes to questions like how do we get into camp? How do we get my family into into camp? So I, I I'm not I don't want to dismiss it, but let me get through the cottages here and then we'll we'll come we'll come back to that. Um, looking at um, the forest view cottages. So if you're walking down the chief trail and you are in the woods this way, and you see the archery range on your right, on your left would be, as you get towards Forest View, the first road there, that's where you would see these cottages, okay? A little parking off the road here and such. Um, and let me show you. So looking at four cottages in total, you have two cottages that would be a little larger, four bedrooms, three baths, and then two cottages that would be two to three bedrooms and two baths, so a little bit smaller there. Uh, that would, and, and then they all would be accessible, so no threshold to get in, no, uh, no, uh, no uh, steps there. And they all would have a first floor university accessible bathroom as well. This is kind of a, 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 um, the plans for it here. So you have, so this camper kit is over here, cottage con is over here, wireman's right here, tennis courts, everything. So chief trail, archery range. Right here, these would be close to camp. They would be able to, they'd be able to come over to the Chief Trail and come into camp. So that's one of our goals: get it close to camp. Kids wouldn't have to walk through, cross any roads here. Just come through the woods here. And you have four cottages here. Um, two would be smaller, um, and two would be larger. And and then you'd have a little, you, you would enter here. It's one one way park here for your cottage and go out this way. All right. And you'd have like a fire pit area back here. The way we design these is you would have most of your living space, like your uh, 
your areas where you're gathering as groups in the backside, facing where like the sun's setting and that kind of stuff, and the bedrooms more in the front here uh, towards the road there. Um, let's see here. And here are some renderings. We have plans for these as well. Um, and you can see some different views of the different cottages here. The goal is to make them architecturally, architecturally interesting, um, attractive. Um, there won't be hot tubs. There won't be granite countertops. They'll be nice because they weren't built in the 1960s, and they're going to be built to last year-round, winterized, climate-controlled, um, but not uh, too extravagant. But uh, all would have screened-in porches in the back as well. So that one's here. All right. So if all this gets completed, like, wow, Chip, that's a lot of buildings there. How does this work? Uh, how many people are, are you going to add to camp? I don't want camp to change because I don't want it to be too big, but I also want to get all my family in every time, right? So how does this work? So um, looking at adding seven university accessible bathrooms, two additional, um, um, we'd probably two, maybe three additional housekeeping and kitchen staff people, um, increasing capacity, about 10 to 15 guests. And this math is really complicated, but um, part of the, the compute, well, the, the reason it's not like, well, I, I count those cottages, it would be like adding 60 people to camp. How is it only 10 to 15 people? How does this work, right? Part of the math of this is that we'd be taking our other cottages offline. Okay, so you're removing some housing that you currently have. You also have, um, so this summer, we averaged 172 people at Family Weeks 1 through 7. And we had 45 families on the wait list for Families 1 through 7. Okay, and um, but of that 172, 164 were staying on site. So on an average, every week, eight people were staying at a house in town, Pleasant Valley, somewhere else, and they're eating all their meals at camp and all their activities. So th these aren't cottagers. These are people who are taking their meals and activities. They just aren't staying in the inn or camp cottages. All right. And so really we're looking at the number of like, so the number is six is 164 you're going to add on to. So the goal is to get our average up to, instead of 172, our average up to 185, 190, 195, which we've had two family weeks this, this summer that were, last week was 190, right? We can do that without too much, without having no spaces in here or the trading post or the basketball court and everything. And so it's really raising that average, getting increased housing flexibility. That's a big aspect there because our problem right now is people sometimes they don't they, they don't want their kids in the dorm but they want their kids in a room next to them right which we don't often offer right um, people don't want to be jammed into a room as much as they used to our women's retreat we used to average 180 to 190 per women's retreat now it's 150 160 right that's since COVID people like I mean I'm not sure women were ever excited to take a top bunk but they're less excited now being a jam-packed room right and so by adding these rooms, we also increase our capacity for all of our adult retreats into the fall as well. Um, this tells you a little bit about the uh, number of percentage of our rooms of private or semi-private bath. Semi-private is like if you're in a cottage, you're sharing with just your family, so semi-private. You're going from currently 35% to 48%. So 52% of our housing is still the inn, right? And that's still a big part of the Camp Arcadia experience. But we know, and you probably know this too, when you're talking to people about the Camp Arcadia experience, you're trying to encourage them to come to camp, often when it gets to the <laughs> bathroom situation, the conversation goes a little bit stale, right? They're like, mm, okay, I'm sure you guys like it, but I like my own bathroom, you know? And so um, <laughs> we're not looking to get rid of that, but we know that it's not for everybody, you know? And it's definitely not trending, so yes. Yes. Over here. Here's the here's the here's the ACA sign, right here. Jaeger Cottage, Bates Cottage, Road to the Ball Field. Yep, right there. Yes.
so the question is, have we looked at extending the in even larger than we just proposed, right? Because you saw that part, right? So more than the four rooms, going to a third floor or going to the east. Uh, we, have, we have looked at that. Um, the inn does not really support a third floor with lodging up there for our current foundation. So we've not looked, so that, that's going to rule that out. Um, and then going to the east is the difficulty with our entrance for our food service, people to bring in the food there and our, and our dumpster area there. And so, and we've not had a lot of people like, I really want to be closer to the dumpster and away from, from camp. And so the ability to offer nicer housing in the inn is limited with the space that we have, unless we go over the turnaround and that kind of stuff, and we chose not to do that based on negative feedback last time around. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, so the question is, have you thought about making more Aspen, Birch, and Cedar, right? putting like a little in there and such, right? And so that brings a, a great point. Um, we decided to stay within, I would say, the envelope of Camp Arcadia here. Um, when you talk to people in town, I was on the Planning Commission for a while, and we are actually, Camp and the Cottage County are its own zoning district, all right? Um, and um, we are, I tell people like we're in the middle of town. We're actually not in the middle of town. We're in the edge of town. And we're our, a little buffered zone here. And having a buffer between us and the town is important. All right, it's important for them, it's important for us, right? And so um, having, putting it in there puts us right in the middle of town, in a residential area. And that is not a good vibe for their, we, then we are not on our own zoning district. We're on their zoning district. And we couldn't put that there. Or at least not the same way we would like to, right? And so they have other restrictions on that. Putting it on our own property keeps it part of camp, keeps it within our sort of envelope there, and we can do what we want, and they're closer to camp. That's been the biggest detraction for those cottages there is their distance from camp. I know it's only a block, but the people feel like you're out of the program. If you're in those cottages on Forest View that we hope to uh, build, you'd be able to hear the square dance. You, you would be able to, although someone said you could hear their square dance like on M22. But anyways, <laughs> you could hear the bells, you could be part of the camp activities, you know, and so I think that's, that's what we're looking for more. So, yes? The current cottages, Aspen, Birch, Cedar, and Spruce, we would repurpose for adult staff during the season. We would not tear them down at, at this point. We would keep them for adult staff during the season. Does that make sense? So we're not putting guests in Aspen, Birch, and Cedar, and Spruce. We're putting adult staff in there. Does that make sense? Juniper, we would keep online for, for guests since it's next to the Oak Street Cottage, and it is winterized, and it has been updated the most. Yes? They don't. We don't have adult staff. Yeah, so our, our two adult staff live in the cottage colony. So I, I have many opportunities, people who want to come and, and volunteer during the, when the college kids are here, we don't have housing for them. Or young couples. Or young Young couples, we don't, do you want to be room with seven college kids? No, you don't. So I don't, you don't, no one does, okay? Um, so, but yeah, so we do have adult staff, like starting in a week or two, we will then start to consolidate staff and provide rooms in our staff quarters for adult staff. But we can't do that May through most of August. Does that make sense? Yes. Right. Yep. We have used that for that for that for that purpose. I'm gonna turn it over to Sarah here. We have more questions coming here in a little bit. But um, all right. You can hit that. Awesome. Right so yeah. So again, uh, going back to the why, like why why all of these things. Just remember, we're we're filtering through this vision, mission, and values that we've been talking about for the last two years. Um, all of this goes back to ministry impact. Right, like we're looking to reasonably increase our ministry impact. Um, every uh, the last, so I think four out of the six family weeks, I've taken pictures. Um, I haven't told you this, Chip. I've taken pictures on my phone. 
every single of four of the six weeks there is someone who circles on their survey you may have been this person before how likely are you to recommend camp arcadia to your family and friends and they circle 10 but they put a note on the side that says but not too many of my friends because i still want to come and so there is a there's a desire to be here at camp arcadia we also desire to share this place with people that we love, with people in our congregations who would be blessed by this ministry. And so we wanna um, kind of use that ministry lens to look at what this next season is for camp. Um, if all of this gets completed, you know, what does camp look like? Some other things to consider. Um, you'll see the, the third bullet point there. I threw that one in there. I don't know if, if you could tell. Uh, it talks about a healthy endowed building maintenance fund. One of, of my goals for this uh, next project would be to establish within the Arcadia Foundation a building maintenance fund that would uh, generate income annually to be distributed toward Camp Arcadia's building and maintenance um, costs. That is one of our highest increases in, in cost over the last several years. Um, each year it is costing more and more to maintain and lovingly maintain our historic buildings. That's important to us here at Camp Arcadia. And so we have to be willing to invest in that. So um, as a part of this potential uh, capital campaign, that is one of my goals. Would you click to the next slide? Thank you. Um, as with everything that we do at Camp Arcadia, we would not start construction until at least 50% of the funds are on hand and 90% have been pledged. Um, so we'll go into some possible next steps. What, you know, how would we get here? We're considering some phase, we're strongly considering, would be planning on some phased construction. Um, just a possibility of two phases, maybe three. Would love your feedback on that. Um, stage one, starting fall of 2026 at the, at the very earliest. The in-south edition, the elevator, the turnaround, which would inevitably uh, get ripped up during construction of that end, so we just need to refinish that. Um, the pavilion, sand volleyball court, and perhaps the Oak Street Cottage, since that's kind of centrally located, um, would would be uh, make sense to us. Please give us your feedback on that. And then stage two would be uh, fall of 2027 or 28 at the earliest. That would include the Forest View Cottages. Now. Uh, our next steps, like how do we get there? What does this look like? Uh, in the fall, um, we are hoping to propose a, an LCA vote on this. We're still working on, on exactly what that looks like, but that would be um, to accept the master land use and facilities plan. So, Basically, what we have just showed you, yes, Camp Arcadia, we think you are going in the right direction. That's a huge piece of this is based on your feedback this summer. Um, the surveys that we handed out are going to be very helpful in, to us in determining, like, is this something that the Camp Arcadia community is behind or, uh, or not, right? And so we'll, we'll hope by November to know, I mean, honestly, Chip and I have talked, like, we will know by the end of August how successful this will be based on your feedback that we're receiving over the course of this summer um, and through the, um, and so whether we will present that as an LCA vote. Does that make sense? And are you tracking with me? It was a little convoluted there for a second, but we're going. Um, that also leads toward uh, feasibility planning. That's a fundraising term, like can we do it? Do we have the support to be able to, to make these projects happen? Um, that's something that, that we're starting to look at um, that would lead, you know, if we had the LCA vote in November and we got the green light on that, that would lead into um, continued feasibility study and silent and major gifts phase of the campaign um, by next summer and then a public phase of a campaign in 2026 uh, leading toward construction at the earliest fall 2026. Um, so, as I have mentioned once, twice, perhaps three times, your feedback is really important to us. At Camp Arcadia, uh, we try never to do anything without asking you first, getting your feedback, using that feedback to help us adjust and tweak. If you've been at these presentations for the last few years, a lot of this should look and feel pretty familiar to you. 
Um, and so um, would love to have your feedback, your, your opinions, would love to follow up with conversations with you if you have continued questions, but also want to open the floor at this time if anybody has questions for the good of the group. Yeah. That was the, 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 the whole first part about the staff. Or, uh, you know, it's all about making our program top top notch, so that it's so we're attracting the best staff and retaining them. And we're looking at like probably two to three staff. So it's not it's not because because you're really only adding ten to fifteen to twenty people to camp. So you're not adding a hundred. And 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 so and if you're having adult staff in the current cottages, those aren't being cleaned every week. So and there's increased housekeeping. I think kitchen are two main areas. Program, we're pretty pretty good right now. What's driving our current size of program staff is the morning youth program, you know. And so maybe working, having those adult staff volunteers would be a great way to, to augment our staff too. So, mm -hmm. yes. And just before the cost of this, you're looking at about you. six to eight million dollars in current in, in, in current dollars. <laughs> That's cheap. He All said. right, put it on your tab. <laughs> PJ's tab. We're getting it. There we go. There we go. Yes. Questions. Yeah, no. yeah, it's it's an obvious question. Yeah. 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 We have a property line there, and we have the AT and T cable that prevented us going any further. So, yeah, it's according to them, it's a million dollars a day if we damage it. So uh, we're not going to touch the AT and T fiber optic cable comes across Lake Michigan and goes right through our property. We got some money for it when they when they put through, but it's one that we couldn't build on. But the the uh, chapel is and it's pretty closest as we want it to the public beach. Now there's trees that are built up there. You can't really see it, but we're really close to the public beach there. So having a buffer there is is key. Yes. Mm -hmm. Would you ever consider holding either consumer a certain portion of um, the uh, the cottages that they're in, or acquiring mm -hmm. um, whatever the land mm -hmm. you talked about? If you have a passion, I think you're going to have a great time. <laughs> <laughs> So the, the question is, would, in the fundraising, would you have the opportunity to earmark your gifts? And I would say at this point, since we're, we're very early stages, we're taking none of our fundraising tools off the table right that's, now. So it all would answer. be a a, available answer. in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yes. Yeah, I would think I'm that's... Just thinking for families that have come to the retreat, and there are many, many families that have come to the retreat, mm -hmm. they may not just decide to go Sure. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Our, our 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 last campaign had thresholds for naming rights for 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 certain things, and we would have the same same thing here. Yep. So that party pavilion is going pretty high, though. In case you're wondering. Uh, <laughs> yes, Frank. You know what? I, I, I know it's yet. too early for us to really know exactly what that's going to be. I, that seems like it, that that's triple or of uh, 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 what it would be. I don't think that's probably the case, but um, that's something we would, we would have to have to look at. Yeah, we don't have those numbers planned out, but there would be continue to be a surcharge for them, and especially the larger ones with more with more people. The surcharge is like a one surcharge, not by person. So we we have to figure that out, but. The, the plan is to keep the same the uh, same uh, model, but I know that there are people there are, there are people who are renting a house in town. You know the house that is um, across from Ashton uh, Birch and Cedar. It's a White House ranch there, two bedroom, one bath, two thousand dollars a week. They paid that, and then this is a couple, and then paid to have their meals and activities at camp, which is about sixty five percent of the cost of coming to camp. If we add to that. 
Not that we're looking to like maximize our income on this, but people are already doing it. You know, people are paying six thousand dollars to stay at the house on M22 by the marsh that's like on a on an angle there, red brick house, six thousand dollars. It's got three floors in there, so it's pretty big, but four families staying there, six thousand dollars for a week. Yikes. So other questions. Yeah. Don't blame your mom. Come on. And she's right there. I will talk to her later. That's fine. Yeah. What's up? So the question was, have we considered uh, taking Camp Arcadia to another lo location? That is not at the top of our, of our list. We're looking to maximize what we have at this location. So that's not been a, it's been discussed. I would say it's been discussed. It's not been a top, uh, it's not been occupying a lot of our, of and our, I would, of, I would of our add, camps. I would just add, we are in community with other camps. So we are sharing this knowledge. This knowledge is not just lost here with us at Camp Arcadia so that we can continue to be super successful, right? It is knowledge that we know that we have the responsibility to share with others to help them also maintain uh, really healthy camp ministries as well. Yeah, every year Family of Nine will have two or three uh, camp professionals from other camps who are interested in our family camping model, and they'll come here to kind of ob observe. Yes. Yeah. So the question was, have you thought about they say blown up the inn and changing it and foundation? The answer is we have. We have. The problem is, is do you value the historic nature of the of the of the inn? Which is we do. Look around. You're sitting in the same desk they sat in 102 years ago, the same floor and the same and the same windows. So the sense is we have property that we can use that are better meeting the trends of of our vacation lodging, right? Adding more to the inn is not where people are wanting, like nationally wanting to go. And Very we don't think we could add on more than we've added on to the inn well enough for, to, for, I mean, to add to the, to the, to go to the east is away from the, away from the, uh, the uh, uh, lake. And even if you move your ducks or someplace else, you're still going to have all the activity that happens behind the inn still happening. You still have to get your food into your kitchen. You still have to have, you know what I mean? So it's really, that's why our discussion was, let's look at additional cottages there. So, yes. So wait, you want them here or you don't want them here? Right. Well, and so the so the question I don't catch up is, is like the the, the idea that if you build cottages, you will. I think what you're saying is you're going to uh, dilute the camp experience or the community. And what I would say is, well, it's already it's currently that is the reality. You just don't realize it. Like there are three or four families every week, not necessarily this week, but other weeks who are staying off site and they are here all day long and they walk down their cottage at, at night, you know, and so they're already doing it. There are, it's already, it's already going on and all the cottagers still are, are doing that. So I don't think this would be a seismic shift in that community vibe. 
you do have the potential. Obviously, if you have those cottages there and they're nicer, people are going to stay in them longer, right? But you still have Lake Michigan and all this happening here. We're, everyone who's staying there is going to be a registered guest at Camp Arcadia. Like, we're not looking, I know you're not saying this, but this gets asked every week. We're not looking to rent those out separately. We're like, that's not going to be some other rental market we're going to go after. No, they're part of camp. We want to increase camp, not do that. But, I, I mean, that's a valid concern. We don't think that's the result of this because we value that, maybe, you know. Maybe in considering that, if I was there, I couldn't even go to Lake Michigan. Right. So, so maybe back up the line kind of activities somehow come in. Like, I, you know, our teams are older teams and stuff like that. There's, if there's nothing going on tonight, it's just kind of like right. stuff. There you go. Yeah. But I mean, considering that if they didn't do that, we would draw potential. Right. Thank you. Yeah, Terry. Yes. Yeah, the the other addition would would accommodate that and more. So we are hoping to add 15, 20 people to camp and keep the buffet set up and that kind of stuff. So yep. Yep. Yes. So the question was, should we move the four street cottages and put them by the Oak Street Cottage, and that'd be easier for a septic tank and septic field stuff, as well as you could have a community over there. We did, we did look at that. Um, I can follow up with you later on about the current plan for the septic area. I talked to Franco about it, but it's escaped my mind. So we can do it there and keep them rel relatively close. The concern with over there was putting so much activity up on that corner there. And we were concerned about that being too much activity as you came into the Conch County and all the traffic that would happen right there. We wanted people also to be able to access camp without crossing your road. And that's why that's been the top location. But Ken, let me follow up with you on the septic stuff. That's, that's, um, that's a valid Chip, I want to be mindful of time. I know that the bell for trivia is about to ring. So feel yes. free to take one or two more questions and Thank then we you. can. Thanks. Yes, Gary. Gary's an architect. So. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Jason, yeah, last Jason, question. Through Jason Cottage, the idea that uh, possibly it, it could be something that could be all within the Lake, and mm -hmm. it's very restricted in this case. Mm -hmm. uh, but we create some that uh, uh, space for the for the veteran itself, and it's a, it's a site across the lake. Yeah, super. Well, thank you, guys. Um, please fill out your surveys. Um, we'll be up here, and of course, the rest of the week, feel free to ask those questions. There are some binders up here with some more, some more drawings. Uh, trivia is happening uh, relatively soon here. So thank you.